takes a good while to go through all this process and we'll have gone and had some dinner and come back out to have a look at this but the initial part will still be interesting okay so here we go now this is lime that has been burnt in a kiln and all the carbon calcium uh, carbonate is now changed to calcium oxide okay and you'll start to see it swell in a minute Sorry, huh? Yeah. Now, if you watch the swelling that will take place here, you'll see... Sorry. That's it growing in volume. If you just, just watch that now. Alright? And that's what I was telling you up in the classroom. People have misunderstood what they've been reading. When they've read books and it says the mortar was mixed one to three, what they forgot was they didn't have the finished lime arrive on a building site. They had quick lime arriving on a building site. So when they were talking about one to three, they were on about quick lime to sand. And that's why when we analyse mortars, they're much more lime rich than one to three. And it's a massively important point because when I first became known and started to go out to sort buildings out, I was meeting all these lime academics who were quite convinced it was one to three finished lime to sand. I said, it's too weak, it's not strong enough, it won't do the job. We've not got enough lime in the mix. Oh, it is, it's one to three like it says. I said, yeah, but they weren't talking about finished lime. Quick lime. That quick lime in there now has grown by about 60%. It can double in volume, it just depends on the type of lime. So your one to three could be one to one and a half, or one to two. It's a massively important point. Because if you're trying to recreate a historic mortar, that's very, very it's hot to the touch. Yeah, <laughs> you can see that that's hot. Now I come from the borders of Box and Beds, Woven Sands, up near Bletchley, and the older generation would eat a meal called a Bedfordshire clanger, which was a suet pudding, which had a divide of suet running across it. At one end it was uh, bacon and onion, and the other end it was jam. And they, they would make that the night before, their wives would make it, and then they would bring that in and they'd shove that in there now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We used to put Cornish pasties in, you know, but that's what you would do. Yeah, so there you go. So that's very hot in there. That's probably something like about 150 degrees C in there. So you would get very badly burnt now if you were in there. As if you would, you know.